What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video here, we're going to be taking a look at the stock Palantir. We'll do a research analysis on it by comparing the company metrics, do a financial evaluation on it, and finally do a price analysis to determine a price to pay for Palantir and if it's worthy to be in your portfolio. Without further ado, let's roll the intro. Let's see what we got, guys. So, Palantir, they are a uh, counterterrorism uh, company, partnering up with the U.S. government, making all the rage. I've heard lots of things about Palantir, um, but I don't know much. So, without further ado, I'm going to be completely unbiased as possible, because, I mean, that's all I can be. And just take a look at the financial situation over here and uh, see what is happening so this erupted in 2020 end of 2020 till about to 38 dollars and slowly 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 has been making its way yep it's been making its way back to almost ipo price guys 13 dollars Interesting. All right. Let's compare the company metrics to see what we have here. All right. Lovely. So we have negative PE ratios for the five year and current, negative EPS for the five year and current, negative return on equity for the five year and current. Brilliant. Negative profit margin. We have 35.81. So. So far, what I'm seeing is we don't make any money with this business. We have negative, okay. Revenue is at $1.43 billion. Net income is at negative 512. But we have positive free cash flow, folks. That's interesting. Um, all right, $210 million compared to a five-year average free cash flow of 170, negative 179, guys. All right, uh, negative return on invested capital. Wow, that's negative across the board. But we do have an almond Z score of 14.57. We want this to be over three, so we have that, awesome. And a Piotrowski score of five, and we want this to be between eight or nine. So far, I'm not too thrilled. All right, let's jump into a financial evaluation and uh, see what we're graded here so far we got a four here let's go through these categories uh five year pe it's a negative so it's a zero current ratio is 4.13 we want this over 1.5 and we got a point there phenomenal turn on equity average we want this to be 15 percent or higher we don't have that so it's a zero eps growth not enough data uh because the company's only ipo'd in 2020 so it hasn't been out for five years also zero that's equity. I like this number. It's 13%. We want this to be 50% or lower. Uh, so it gets a point there. Ties in nicely with our current ratio here. That means they're leveraging their capital through equity and not through debt. It's important. Share dilution. Oh, God. Palantir is issuing you 26, almost 27% more shares in the last five years. It's IPO just not even, a, just two years ago and they're already diluting you over a quarter of their shares my god that's not healthy um but hey i mean they it makes sense i understand why they were doing it look this stock price it, it jumped up like absolute madness up until when I, yeah until about march almost march of last or february february of last year yeah, it makes sense. Like, why why would why would they take on debt? Which makes sense because they the debt to equity ratio is low, so they're not taking on debt. Just issue more shares. Shareholders are gonna pay the price anyways. Look at that. It shot up the evaluation. What? This like what's that? What's that now? Twenty five billion dollar company. My God. And then imagine what it was up here. I'm not quick at math, so I'm not gonna try to attempt the calculation. Also. Before we go any further, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. It helps the channel out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside when I'm making videos like these. Gets me all hyped up and excited. So, you know, 
Do that for me, please. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> At least when I'm recording this video. <laughs> okay. So, not enough data on our net income growth. Oh, yeah, we did share the illusion, right? So, yeah, it, uh, not thrilled about that. Net income growth, uh, not enough data because it hasn't been out for that long. Free cash flow growth, where you're seeing, in, this is probably pulling in data before it went public. Um, that's why we're seeing this massive increase. Uh, 493%. 0.75 increase granted we are taking it from a negative number so i gotta go and verify afterwards if this is the first time we've seen a uh positive number maybe we can take a look at that right now oh god we only have like three years of data on here free cash flow oh jesus Twenty eighteen. Negative, okay. Wow. Man, that's rough. Okay. Oh, we just hit positive this year. Hopefully, hopefully it stays like that. Um, return on invested capital average, Jesus, says it's negative 56 percent that means they're getting it they're losing money on their investments we want this over 10 percent, guys we don't have that uh five year revenue growth five point uh, 57 point 29 percent let's go we can go to the revenue growth all right well we got some positive numbers here um yeah i mean it's something Four out of ten. I mean, this kind of screams to me that they have low debt numbers. They're increasing their free cash flow, which is good, and their revenue growth, which is also good. But they're diluting you with shares that are now. I mean, not. I can't. I'm not too mad, but this company's not really bringing in money. I don't. I'm really confused about their free cash flow. I'm really, I'm really am because the companies like this really confuse me when it's negative net income but a positive free cash flow. I don't know. It's, it's just does not, it doesn't make sense. Um, but I digress. Uh, it is been out for only a year or a couple, no, a couple of years now. I would like to see this company out at least one, one more cycle. Twenty twenty, yeah. I kind of want to see where it's at on in November 2020. Uh, 20, sorry, I want to see where it is at in November 2022 of this year. Let's try to get an estimate of where it might be going. Uh, let's do a 10-year analysis on Palantir because... No, just because. I don't have to give you guys a reason. <laughs> I don't want to. 47% uh, increase... 57 and 57. Uh, I don't think it's going to be growing like that for the next couple, f next 10 years. So I'm going to go a conservative amount and go, I'll go, I'll go 22, 24, and 25. How about that? Actually, you know what? I'll spread it out a little bit because you know what? I like you guys. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Palantir uh, stock fans um, in this video so i'll make them happy so we'll go 22 26 and 30. this number is absurd profit margin negative 106. um i'm gonna go zero and then i'm gonna go 10 and then i'll go or you know what i'll even I'll, I'll do 15 and then i'll go 30. free cash flow margin i'll do zero or or f six or oh, god guys can you just give me one positive number please jesus i'll do i'm stressing over this company like like i'm one of the board members here i'll do we'll do we'll do 20 22 24 yeah i'll just do a full wish list this is me speculating at this point free cash flow price of free cash flow we'll do uh, We'll do the magical 14, 16, 18, because 
he, they want to live on the high side and PE ratio. We'll do 12, 14. Nah, uh, is that does that make sense? Nah, we'll do 14, 16, 18. Then we'll run it with the 12, 14, 16 numbers. Okay, desired return, guys. Let's see what what pops up. We'll do 13, 13, and 13. Oh my God! Look at this. Well, would you look at that, guys? If you follow these numbers here, if you follow these numbers, Palantir is a buy at $30 of average calculation with a conservative average of being 11.26 cents. Now, here's the problem with these numbers. Now, this is assuming next year or this year, Palantir revenue grows less the one that currently has been growing the last couple of years. But also generates a profit. Now this is the big number here. 0, 15, and 30. This, that means it has to turn a profit like that. We don't have that just yet. Um, like if I had to go into my income statement. Like my net income right here. Yeah. And like our earnings per share is just absolutely like horrendous. So here's the, that's the thing guys. This company needs to turn a profit like a complete, has to do a complete 180 and actually be a profitable company. Free cash flow margin has to be po positive. Price of free cash flow has to decrease by a considerable amount. It can't be 123. It's got to come down to the 14, 16, 18. Our PE ratio has to be positive as well and not be negative 50. So, is this plausible? Plausible. It's plausible, but is, is it likely that's going to happen tomorrow, next year? I don't think so. But, hey, I'm... I could be wrong. It could be very, very wrong. Palantir can show up and say, you know what? We're going to hit this category right here. We'll grow our revenue by 30%. We'll have a profit margin of 30%. Free cash flow margin of 24%. Price of free cash flow of 18. Who knows? Like, you know what I mean? But I do think this is a unicorn list that is unlikely to happen. I mean, this may potentially happen cutting the revenue growth in half not making a single profit just netting zero free cash flow margin at um 20 now i i keep hearing that like yeah so hmm like I, I know like they are a military company and they're trying to build these contracts with the US government and stuff like that. But and here and here's the thing when I when I hear information like that, I don't care. I I really any time a company says or someone says we're gonna be doing these deals with this person and that person and this and and this is a I think a prime example of this company of why it got so much hype, is that people will typically hear these deals and say, oh my God, they got deals going on and they'll jump up the price like crazy. Guys, I'll tell you one thing. It's all talk. It's all talk. Until it actually happens and the numbers reflect that, just you have to zone out the noise. I don't care what deals companies make with like one another if the numbers don't match up. If the, you know what I mean? Like, like it, it just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense to me to pour money into into a business that hasn't proven themselves. Yeah, it just that doesn't that make. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna upset a lot of people that have probably invested into this company, but that's just the way that's the way I personally think about a business. I want to see the numbers actually reflect that. Show me that the revenue is increasing. Show me the free cash flow is positive. Show me that the net income is is increasing over the last five years show me the return on invested capital is improving show me like show me a positive number that's the that's the main thing 
So that being said, if you agree with these numbers here, and at least in the moderate and aggressive category, then yeah, by all means, Palantir is a buy at this current price. Um, I'm staying away from it until it starts generating, well, like some some positive earnings essentially. Like I need, I would I would like to see the these numbers change. I'd like to see these numbers change. I want to get more data on the company. I, me personally, I like looking at companies that are at least been on the on the market for at least five years to try to get a range three to five years minimum three, but five years ideally. Um, I mean the potential's there. However, I I don't think it is this price. And I say that because I don't think it'll hit these numbers, any of these numbers, by next year. But you know what? I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, well, then you know what? I'll eat my words. I'll make a video on that. But in that regard, guys, those are my opinions on uh, Palantir. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below of a company you want to see evaluated and your thoughts on Palantir, if it's a good investment or not. You know, build a community up and uh, just get some more voices talking. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.